Welcome back to the channel, gang. Okay, we have an actual burn find here and another find over here we're gonna go look at after. Now, can't disclose the location. It took a lot. This is what you call a cold call. This is how we find our amazing old cars and trucks. Um, you have to excuse my voice a little bit, gang. A bunch of dental work got done again, so I may sound a little lispy. Bear with me. All right, let's go take a look at this one. What do we have here? Oh, baby. All right, so. <laughs> this is what a real barn find looks, at, looks like. You guys ever uh, seen the Haggerty show, Barn Find Hunter with Tom Cotter? Excellent show. Guy's a little lacking in knowledge but his enthusiasm is second to none. What we have here, it's either a 70 or a 71 Dodge, obviously. Let's see what we got in there. Okay, 318, small block. Now somebody could have put a 360 in it at some point, but it appears to be a 360 or 318. Power steering, but it's unhooked. Manual brakes, it's got a battery in it. We're gonna try to make this one drive out of where it is, gang. So we, uh, we're we hoping when we come back here, provided we make the deal with the gentleman, that we'll be able to drive this truck out of where it is on this one. Uh, the inspiration for that comes from Junkyard Digs <coughs> and Thunderhead 289. Big shout out to those guys and Dylan McCool. Thanks for the inspiration, guys. Okay, so we got electronic ignition, so that would make it a 71. Or no, it's got the later voltage regulator, but not electronic ignition, so that would make it a 70. This is the fun part, gang, when you're trying to figure this kind of thing out here. We got later truck mirrors on it. Um, I don't know that I can get in that side. So we can try to figure out the uh, door tag. Okay, I'm gonna loop around here and go in through that side door and see what I can figure out. This is a very true barn find. No faking going on here. Okay, uh, so she's a D100. I wasn't sure because I couldn't see how many lugs she had, but we got Yep, it's a 100 custom cab. It's pretty clean in here. Let's take a look here, see what we can figure out. It's not even rotten. I'd say it's been sitting in storage for a long time in this barn. Not quite sure how long, but. By the looks of the speakers, I would say sometime in the 90s was the last time it was on the road. Take a look at those speakers, guys. And down at the footwell there, the custom six by nines in the boxes. See them? <laughs> well, somebody got rid of some wasp at one point. Okay, guys, I'm gonna step out of the way here, hold the light, let you get a shot of the interior here, Bob. <laughs> Pretty clean. Somebody's put a sunroof in it, which is too bad, but could be cool. Doors close nice. This is a true barn find, 100%. Okay, so we'll be right back with you guys. We're gonna try to get over there and get that door open and see if we can read the door tag. We'll be back with you in a minute. All right, gang, so we've done some investigating. The truck is a 71, the D100, factory 318, 727 transmission truck. Uh, it's got eight and three quarter rear end with 355 shear grip. Uh, we did that by crawling through and decoding this tag, which I'm not sure that you'll be able to get a good shot of. But if you pause the video, you can get the information you need from that. Uh, on Dodge trucks, all swept lines up to 71. Well, 
people call later swept lines swept lines when really they're swept sides. Swept line trucks, I'm talking 61 to 71, on the driver's side door pillar, on the body of the truck, every truck had a tag. It tells you the transmission and engine and the weight rating of the truck from the factory. And it'll give you the serial number so you can figure out where it was made. This truck, from what I could tell, was made in St. Louis. And other indications, I can't get a good shot because of where it is in the dark, but on the doors, it appears to say either City of Tacoma or City of Everett. And from what the gentleman who currently owns the truck told me, as far as he knew, that's where it came from. So, I mean, it looks pretty clean. The, the radiator appears to be full. It has antifreeze in it, so it hasn't leaked out. The truck hasn't run in years. He's not sure exactly when. By the looks of the fuel here, guys, I would say, I don't know, probably five, six years, maybe more. He's not sure. He's thinking 2009 was the last time this truck was run. So our goal is, it appears to have the factory two barrel on it. What our goal is going to be, like I said before, uh, due to the inspiration from Junkyard Digs and uh, Thunderhead 289, we're going to try to get this one running where it is so we can drive it out of here. Uh, I mean, we're going to need a battery. We're going to come back, run our own fuel supply to it, try to drain the original tank. I do have some concerns about the rust on the firewall where the master cylinder is. Uh, I did push on it. It feels pretty solid. The only body damage I can find is right here. Appears to have an old grandpa whiskey dent in it. And then once we get it out of here, uh, our plan is to use it as a shop truck. So we'll lower it pressure wash the daylights out of it and maybe get some nice artwork done on the doors for coastal auto reaction and uh, we'll leave the patina on this one that's my goal at least the wiring looks unmolested uh, there's old oil chain stickers inside that it had for years and years um, I didn't catch the mileage we'll have to check and see what the mileage is on it and uh, yeah <laughs> It's been in this barn, hood back, for probably the better part of 10 years by the looks of it. The grill looks to be in okay shape, same with the bumpers. Hopefully it rolls, and uh, I look forward to sharing the video with you where we get this thing running and it drives itself out of the barn. Okay, we'll be back with you shortly. I need to go check the mileage. All right, gang, so here we are inside here. It says... 42,683, I believe. So, probably 143. It's got a 80s tape deck in it. No AC, but that's not a surprise. Apparently, he's got the keys and everything. She doesn't look rotten in here. I'm glad it's been sitting in the barn. Because it's got a homemade, well, not homemade, but an aftermarket sunroof put in it. That could be fun this summer. All right, gang. Barn. Well, I don't know if you call this a barn. Shelter find. But uh, find number two on this property. And uh, I'm not sure on the year. I'm thinking a 1970 Superior motorhome. I know it's on a Dodge chassis, and I'll show you why. I've got to show you this door handle. Tesla thinks he came up with the push and pull door handle first. I don't think so. Superior motorhome. Look at the construction of this thing. Porthole window. Watch my step here. Ooh. Get the flashlight on. Get up in here. All right, come on in, guys. So, here's the biggest indication. It has the same steering wheel and shifter as my 68 swept line and the same dash is a 70 which would tell me it's a 70 leftover parts from years gone by and it's got a 70 dash in it superior coach absolutely stunning so this I believe this would have a 413 in it I don't know yet when we get it running we'll let you know well here's a good one here's all the uh, 
panel lights holding tank, battery condition, water pump. Old school, gotta love it. All right, so let's go back here now. He said somewhere back here was original owner's manuals. New rubber, heater. Oh, I got a little button. Oh, there they are. Okay. This appears to be everything to do with it. Nice and dry in there too. Okay. Superior Motorhome Owner's Manual. Welcome to the Superior Way of Living. Motorhome Chassis Service. Here we go. Dodge M300. 375 RM 300 RM 350 and RM 400 motorhome chassis and here's all the owner's manual stuff for the motorhome and somebody's ancient old picture here a Polaroid of somebody camping who knows who that is hmm to give that to the gentleman those cool things. I love this kind of exploration, guys. Look at this illustration. Owning electrical. So I guess she's got an Onan generator in her. That'll be fun. Oh, there's all the paperwork for it. Title. Awesome. PC registration too. Right on. We'll save that picture for the guy. Here's a look at the chassis says LS Lovejoy maybe that would be the original owner so here we go M375 circled where's the engine engine 9 I wonder if it'll say electrical 8 having these are indispensable Okay, here we go. So, prior to the 1970 model year, M300 and M75 motorhome chassis were equipped with a 318.3 engine only. Beginning with the 1970 model year, this model, a 413.1 engine was made available on both the M300 and M375 motorhome chassis. Service procedure specifications and tightening references for both the 318 and 413 engine are included in group 9 engine of this manual. Well, I know this one's got a big block because I looked when I was here before and I could tell what the distributor was. So, it would be the 413. It'd be quite the pusher if it had a 318 in it. All right, well, I'm going to stick these back up in here. Safe and sound. We'll give the gentleman who owns the, currently owns the motorhome and the property the picture. That's the stuff for the appliances. Put this back up in here, it seems nice and dry. Here we go. Let's take another look at the dash, guys. And then we'll give you a walk around outside. Look at these. I can't believe the upholstery's in such good shape. There's no mice damage or anything. Wiring doesn't appear to be messed with. Add-on air conditioner, place for a stereo. That's the same dash that's in the 70 and 71 swept lines. Trade the steering wheel out of this for Betsy. <laughs> All right, let's get outside and take a look around the outside of this bad boy. All right, gang. Now this is how they did stuff back in the day. Close this over. So this is gonna be for the fridge. This is, it's not fiberglass, it's aluminum. The, the door is fiberglass, this is aluminum. Let's take a walk around the outside here. Fiberglass, 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 fiberglass. These are a newer mirror that someone's put on over the years. Probably because the other ones are too small. 
metal. Okay, so we got fiberglass down the sides. The nose is metal. Fiberglass up there. Superior. Holy, here we go. Windshield washer bag. So this, obviously, somebody has put this in because the older rads, the coolant overflow, they just rent right to the ground, guys. So, good idea, gang, to put something like this in. Um, on the cold start video, when I was talking about championing radiators with Betsy there, you can see what I added. And I think if we get this, I'm going to be giving Champion a call with the measurements for this radiator to try to get a brand new one into this bad boy. Ventilation tranny cooler right here. If you take a look down there, guys, past that monstrous horn, you'll see the tranny cooler. Okay, we'll close up this access panel here. This will be try to get it running where it is as well. We're gonna have to drive this one home. She's a bit heavy for the trailer. Superior 2500. We're gonna have to find some different, uh, probably some wheels and tires for it. The old school bolt pattern. That's the battery tray. It's got no batteries in it. That's good. And we got the furnace outlet right here. I'm told that everything worked when it was parked. Fiberglass fiberglass so the roof is fiberglass by the looks of it well no the roof looks metal it's got quite the thermo king air conditioner up there take a look at that guys <laughs> gotta love how they did stuff hot water heater in the back let's go around and see if we can find the generator all right guys so we have located the Onin generator. Come take a closer look inside here. <coughs> I'm relatively confident that I can get this to run as well. That'll be its own video, I think. Once we get this thing running and out of here, we'll do the will the generator run spot. And all of these latches are going to have to be oiled and adjusted. Those ones work pretty good, though. Look at that gripper. It's uh, aggressive. Let's see here. My classic tire. We have a 7x17 8 ply regroovable Firestone Transport 110 nylon. Only the best for the superior. Well, these are all automotive windows. These can be changed. This is the way uh, older windshields work, guys. This channel here, this piece of rubber pulls in and out to hold the glass in the vehicle. Well, I can't wait for a sunny day and uh, we'll be back to you soon so you can get a closer look at this 1970 Superior Motor Coach on a Dodge M375 chassis. Take it easy, gang. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.